Okay, now you've had a chance to finish up the cuff of the sock, and it should look something like this. The pattern tells you to do the knit two, purl two rib for two inches, but really you can make it any length that you like. You just have to remember to make the other sock to match. So, and I, I wanna show you first how to measure to see how much cuff you have. One thing you can do is you can count the number of stitches by counting the V's all the way up like this. Or you can take your, your ruler and set it, I'm putting the last line, the five here, right at the bottom of the needle and measuring all the way down. So from five to three, I have a solid two inches there. But usually what I'll do is I will count the stitches to make sure the two socks match exactly. Okay, the next thing that we're gonna get started on here, now that we have two inches of cuff, is to make the heel flap. And this is what the heel flap looks like when you're finished with it. You stop knitting with two needles and just knit back and forth like you would on a scarf on one needle. Now, you can see this doesn't look like straight stockinette or straight uh, knitting like you would see here in the rib. This stitch is called eye of partridge. Eye of partridge, yes, eye of partridge. And uh, every other stitch is slipped and it makes it a denser fabric than regular stockinette stitch. And the reason for that is because the back of the heel is a high wear spot on socks. And so uh, a denser fabric will keep you from getting holes in your socks. Now, I already told you that the, these socks aren't that great for stuffing into shoes, but this is all really good practice because these are things that you will see in every sock pattern that you ever knit. So that's the heel flap. I'm gonna show you how to get started on that right now. So take your, your cuff and rearrange the stitches. Remember here is the beginning of our round because that's where the tail end of the yarn is. Rearrange the stitches so that you have 20 stitches on the first needle and 10 on the other two. And now I don't want to mess up the space here, the beginning of my round. So I'm going to transfer everything this way and not mess this up. So I already know I have 16 stitches on this needle. So I'm gonna transfer four, two, three, four. That should give me 20, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, yes. And I have two, four, six, eight on this needle. So I'm gonna transfer two from the other one onto here. And when you're slipping stitches, you always transfer and slip stitches as if to purl. If you transfer as if to knit, you're going to twist the stitches. Now, I'm saying always, but there's an exception coming up here pretty soon. But I'm gonna transfer these as, as if to purl so I don't twist them. Okay, so here's the beginning of my round. 20 stitches on needle one and 10 stitches on needles two and three. Now, I'm just going to work back and forth on needle one for now. And if you look at your pattern, the, uh, the heel flap is a two row pattern. Let me show you how this looks. Grab an empty needle. I'm going to slip the first stitch as if to knit, knit the next stitch, and that's what the pattern says. You repeat that pattern all the way across the whole first row. Slip as if to purl, knit, slip as if to purl, knit, slip as if to purl, knit. This is the secret to the denser fabric that I was telling you about. It's the eye of partridge stitch. I always think bird of paradise. It's not bird of paradise, it's eye of partridge. Something to do with birds. Okay, so that was row one. Now, for row two, we're not knitting in the round anymore. We're knitting back and forth. So I'm just going to flip it as if I was knitting a scarf just on this needle here. The other two needles are just gonna hang there and wait for me to come back to them. Now, don't get confused by the pattern here. Row one was alternating, slipping, knitting, slipping, knitting, slipping, knitting, all the way across the row. Row two, you only slip the first stitch. I even put it in caps purl across all remaining stitches. You slip the first one and then purl across the rest. But let me show you. Slip as if to purl and purl across all of the remaining stitches. Okay? No slipping after the first stitch. That's it. That is the two row repeat for the heel flap. You're going to alternate those two rows for 20 rows total and then work row one one more time. And I always use one of these. This is a Kacha row counter. This one's awesome because it has a lock on it that keeps it from registering rows when you're not 
um, when it's in your knitting bag and you're not using it. Um, you want to keep track of your rows. It's a little bit hard to count when, uh, at least for me it is, when I switch from the ribbing to the eye of partridge stitch, there's always a question whether it's one row less or one row more, so I always keep count with one of these. In fact, I'm so awesome that I always wear it around my neck on a ratty piece of yarn <laughs> and find myself in the grocery store later still wearing it. Wonder why people are looking at me funny. So repeat those two rows for 20 rows total, work row one, one more time, 21 rows, and when you come back, we'll work on turning the heel.